Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we're going to give it a, a minute or two to just allow everyone to join and get settled. Um, in the meantime, if you are here, we would love to know what organization you're representing today. So you can just click the little chat icon um, and let us know who you are and where you're with. And we'll get started in a minute. Awesome, great. Well, we're going to continue to have um, participants joining. So as you join, just let us know in chat who you are, where you're from, what organization you're with, uh, and we're going to get started. So um, welcome to the Give Local Allegheny Highlands webinar. It's all about strategy. So my name is Sarah. I'm going to be leading you through today's presentation. Um, a quick housekeeping item to note before we get started. Our webinar is being recorded and it'll be posted in the toolkit on the givelocalah.org uh, website. So you can uh, refer back to it when we're done. Um, also, if you have any questions that you come up with during the webinar, you can click the little Q&A icon chat bubble at the bottom and you can send those over and we'll cover them um, kind of during the webinar and also at the very end, we'll get to them. Um, but again, I'm Sarah, I'm with Mighty Cause. We're the platform provider for Give Local Allegheny Highlands um, and we are super excited to be here with you all uh, again this year. Um, and we also have Daniel joining us today from the Allegheny Foundation. So I'm going to pass the mic over to you, Daniel, so you can say a few words. Yeah, hey, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining this uh, webinar. I personally am really, really excited seeing some of the content we're going to cover today, uh, just talking about advertising strategy. Um, and so I hope that, uh, you know, the, some of the tools that we're talking about are helpful in uh, preparing for Give Local Allegheny Highlands, but also just for you know, your nonprofit in the future. And uh, yeah, I'm really, like I said, really excited to uh, be here and uh, uh, hear Sarah cover some of this content. Awesome, cool. Well, we have a ton of content to cover today. Um, kind of looking at these four bulleted points for our agenda today. Um, we're gonna be going over the basics for the event. Um, then we're gonna kind of talk through the prizes overview that you all probably really wanna hear more about. Um, we'll go over campaign strategy. Um, we'll also have, of course, the Q&A at the end. Um, one thing we do want to point out is that we have a ton of content to cover today um, and we want to make sure that you get something out of it. So if you're writing down notes and you're getting, you know, you're like, oh my gosh, this is a ton of stuff. Um, our goal is really to have you kind of kind of pick a couple key things that you want to work on. If you're new to the event, um, it might be a lot, but just kind of pick like overall goals. Do you want to, you know, try more peer to peer fundraising this year? Do you want to try to secure more matches? So everything that Daniel and I are kind of presenting today are kind of jumping off points for you as you're developing your campaign. Um, okay, so we're going to get right into it. So I'm going to pass it back over to you, Daniel. You can cover the basics. Uh, yeah, so uh, I believe everyone who is here is registered for the event. Um, uh, Give Local Allegheny Highlands is taking place this year on June 7th. Uh, which means that all of the timed prizes for the event will be happening that day. Um, but people can um, start visiting the website and making donations starting this next Tuesday, May 24th. And uh, donations made between the 24th and uh, the 7th will count for the overall fundraise, uh, fundraising competitions. But of course, all the like um, timed things are happening on June 7th. So that's really the day we're promoting uh, to have people come to the website and uh, make donations. And in addition to all of those prizes, uh, Mary and I actually just spoke to the seniors at Covington High School yesterday. And Mary went uh, earlier in the year and spoke with the students at Allegheny uh, High School. We have the High School Senior Giving Program. And uh, that program is the, an opportunity that we provide to every senior in the county to vote for one nonprofit participating in Give Local Allegheny Highlands. And for every vote that the nonprofit receives, uh, we will send $50 to that organization. So I believe all students received a survey form with each nonprofit listed yesterday. So if you know any high school seniors, make sure that you're reaching out to them now, letting them to vote for your organization. And um, hopefully we can, uh, 
you know, send get every student to vote and send a few thousand dollars to the nonprofits based on that. Awesome. Um, cool. So once you're registered, you're ready to go, you're wondering what to do next. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is to really customize your organization's profile. Uh, if you have not watched our first webinar, it's all about getting started. It really focused on all the nuts and bolts of just really how to navigate the Mighty Cause platform. Um, and it has a ton of just, you know, getting started information, how to kind of build out your profile, how to edit different sections, logos, uh, banners. So I don't want to repeat a lot of that here. So be sure to check that one out on demand um, in the toolkit tab on givelocalage.org when you can. But once your page is customized, you're ready to go, you really are going to start to think about your communication strategy for the giving day um, and just all the different outlets that are available to you to help reach your donors. Um, you're going to want to start thinking about the goals you have for your organization during Give Local Allegheny. Um, you're also going to want to start thinking about securing matching grants to entice donors um, and also start to think about how to really engage your community of supporters or ambassadors, as we call them, um, such as like peer to peer fundraising for your organization. Uh, overall, it's a really great time to start to get creative and get really excited about your Give Local Allegheny Highlands campaign and kind of plan on how you want to connect with and make your appeal to your donors. Um, you probably have seen the Give Local Allegheny Highlands toolkit resources available to you, but I want to just touch on that. Uh, it's filled with tips and tricks and FAQs, walkthroughs, a ton of linked support articles. Uh, more details on matching grants and peer to peer campaigns, it's, uh, as well as social media links to different kind of promotional materials that Daniel's put together. So definitely check that out as you kind of build out your campaign. Um, we're going to jump into prizes because I think that will get some ideas turning for like what you all are looking forward to um, trying to kind of secure for the day. So I'm going to have Daniel kind of give a little synopsis of uh, the prizes. So in addition to the money that the foundation is providing through the high school seniors giving program, we have $35,000 in prizes available in this year's event. Um, I want to start by giving a shout out to Ingevity. Uh, they are sponsoring the first power hour of the event, the 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. power hour for small nonprofits. Um, and then the rest of the $33,500 is being provided by the Allegheny Foundation. And we've got a mix of prizes that are kind of competitive uh, prizes based off how much money each organization raises, but also prizes that are really open to any nonprofit regardless of size. So we'll start with the competitive ones. And these are all broken out into um, two categories, small nonprofits and large nonprofits. And the total, uh, the full groupings for each of these categories is available on the prize page on givelocalah.org. But the cutoff point is if your total annual revenue for 2021 was below $100,000, you're competing in the small nonprofit category. And we've got 17 of those. And if your annual revenue was above $100,000, you'll be in the large nonprofit uh, category. And so for each of those categories, we're having an overall fundraising competition uh, for all money raised between May 24th and June 7th. So that includes donations made on givelocalah.org and then also offline donations that you receive during that time. And Sarah will talk a bit later about how to upload those offline donations to the website. And then um, the organization in each of those categories that raises the most money in that time period will receive $3,000. And then we've got prizes for second through fifth place as well, which you can see on the screen. And then on the, the day of the actual event, June 7th, we'll be offering six different power hours. As I said, the first one sponsored by Ingevity, um, and then the next five sponsored by the Allegheny Foundation. And what these competitions are, are uh, one hour fundraising sprints where the nonprofit that raises the most money in each of those hours um, will receive $1,500. So we've got three competition hours for small nonprofits and three competition hours for large nonprofits, which you can see up on the screen now. And then uh, one thing that is important to note is every nonprofit is only eligible to win one power hour. So if you win the 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. hour, even if you do raise the most money um, in the uh, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. hour, you will not win because you've already won the first one. And the reason that we did this is we wanted the prizes to be really accessible for all nonprofits because we want to make sure that everyone is getting some prize money for participating. And that's also why we've included these 15 golden tickets. 
And so what those are, um, we'll be drawing one every hour from uh, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. on June 7th. And uh, what uh, we'll do is every donation made in the hour leading up to the drawing will be eligible to win a golden ticket and it's randomly selected. And the um, donation that is randomly selected will be boosted with an extra $200 towards the nonprofit that wins it. So we're offering 15 of those uh, on June 7th. And again, with those, each nonprofit is only eligible to win one golden ticket. But uh, if it's getting towards the end of the day and you haven't won one yet, uh, you can uh, make sure that you have a donation received during the hour and your chances to win one are pretty high near the end of the day. And in addition, just to make sure that absolutely every nonprofit that participates in the event gets at least some prize money, we have a prize pool of $7,000 that will be evenly divided between every organization that receives at least 10 donations on GiveLocalAH.org uh, during the entire event from May 24th through June 7th. So last year we had 11 organizations receive at least 10 donations. And so each of those organizations got about $318 from the Allegheny Foundation just for having participated in the program. So that's kind of a quick overview of the prizes, but there's a lot more information on the prize page on givelocalah.org. Perfect, thank you. Um, okay, so we're gonna get right into campaign strategy. Um, so since the event, we have two weeks of uh, pre-event giving, and then we have the 24-hour event itself. The trick is really to make the most of it, um, is to be able to sustain your fundraising momentum. And a really great way to do that and make sure your campaign is on track is to set mini goals for your organization um, to really help generate buzz and build excitement. You can set mini goals for certain hours of the day so you can keep people excited about your own goals and continue working towards top prizes. So you're going to want to refer to the prize opportunities on the site um, when you're building out, you know, your overall goals and as well as your mini goals. Um, and also you can set non monetary goals for your campaign, like a unique donor count, you know, if you want to try to do more peer to peer fundraising, so you want to get at least five peer to peer fundraisers this year. Um, or if you want to have a mini goal or kind of your overall goal being securing more sponsors or, in, you know, getting more matching grants going this year. Um, your mini goals uh, are going to really help sustain your fundraising momentum and get people excited about helping you reach your overall goals. Uh, so to set mini goals, you're going to want to think of your overall fundraising goal and then what you'll need to raise um, or how many donors you need to get to achieve those larger goals. So if your goal is to get, you know, say 100 donors during your event, um, you're going to want to have like these little kind of mini goals like milestone markers to keep your fundraising goals on track. So you're going to hit that goal by the end of the event. Um, you're also going to want to definitely keep in mind when your donors are most active so you can adjust your hourly or section goals kind of accordingly. Um, if you know there are certain times of the day that are going to be particularly slow for you, it's also helpful to look at those time slots and use that as an area where you know you need to boost that time period. Um, a lot of organizations will use matching grants during these kind of slower periods to really shake up their campaigns. Um, and get a little bit of momentum going and incentivize donors to give during slower periods. Um, asking for seed donations. So something else you can do is to get the ball kind of rolling on your campaign is asking for seed donations. Um, so these are donations from people in your organization's inner circle. They usually are used to kind of break the ice with other donors. They're going to help get the ball rolling. They're called seed donations because they make the number of your donations grow. Um, so people to ask for seed donations could be your board members for, for sure, uh, staff, people who are directors or high level leaders at your organization, um, your organization's volunteers, really just anyone at your organization who is highly engaged in your work. Um, and as a reminder, these do not have to be huge donations. These are kind of small, you know, seed size. They're just a little bit of something to put in the bank to have on your page to really show people that there's some movement, some movement happening. Um, and people seeing donations coming into your page will help others, uh, you know, be encouraged to give as well. So it's nice to have little seed donations coming in at the beginning. Um, we're going to talk about matching grants. So a really great strategy for driving donations on a giving day is securing a matching grant. Um, a matching grant is basically a large donation that your organization is going to use to bring in other smaller donations by setting it as a match. So our Mighty Cause Matches tool can do a lot, uh, like setting a cap for donation matching, 
So in case you have, you know, your match, you don't want someone to come along, make a big donation and then eat the entire match up. So then you have uh, nothing to really talk about, say, for the next hour. If you think that your match is going to probably last for an hour and then someone comes and, uh, you know, absorbs all of the match and then you lose the momentum that the match was going to give you. So it's nice to be able to kind of use this tool to create a match that's going to last that a lot of people can get a, a little chunk out of. It's really incentivizing to donors. I mean, double your donation, like a one-to-one -one match is a really kind of standard one. Someone who donates $5, another $5 is gonna get put in your bank, you know? Um, so people to consider as prospects for your matching grant uh, are your board members, definitely. Sometimes an individual board member will be happy to provide you a matching grant. Um, another thing to consider is asking your board to work together to provide the match. So if your board, you know, if you have, say, 10 members on your board and everyone's donating, you know, 50 or $100, you have a nice little chunk of change that you can then use as a matching grant. Um, consider also your major gift donors who have given large donations to your organization in the past. Those are excellent prospects. Um, and providing a matching grant for them is a really fun way to liven up how they're, how they're making their donation to you. Instead of just like writing a check, they're helping your organization grow. Um, they're, you know, able to see their impact and how they're able, their donation is able to drive other donations. You can also give your donor extra recognition when you're promoting the match. Um, and I'll show you on the next page kind of what the interface kind of looks like that you can, uh, depending on who the match is, is from, like if it's from a, a business, you can put logos on it. Um, but at this stage of the kind of the event, uh, you're really going to want to start to make your phone calls, send your emails, start to ask different uh, people who could be prospects for your match, see how warm they are to the idea, and then you can kind of ask if they would like to consider doing a match and shore up the details for what time they would want to do it so you can kind of pre-schedule those. Um, as far as the match and grant, um, in order to make the most of your matching grant, you're going to want to promote it. So the first step is really going to the matching grant tool on your Give Local Allegheny Highlands profile and adding it in on the back end. Um, there's some marketing tools built into the platform for the matching grant. So we are going to add a sticker to your donate button when your grant is active. Um, some changes to your checkout process will reflect the match and get the match listed on your organization profile. Uh, we're also going to have a tab on the Give Local Allegheny Highlands uh, live site on the day of the 24-hour uh, event where um, donors can come and they can see where what matching grants are live. Uh, it's also searchable in the actual search where donors can go. They can see who which organizations have matching grants live, which is a big um, kind of sticking point. Um, and then when you are setting up your match, you're going to want to note that you will want to make sure include match value and page metrics isn't checked within the match setup tool. I have a little arrow pointing to it. This is going to allow your match to count towards your main leaderboard total once it's met. And so it's not double counting on your Give Local Allegheny Highlands campaign. Um, if your match sponsors are willing to pay the match online, that's great. Their matching dollars are going to be included in your leaderboard totals. If your match sponsors would rather pay by a check, that's great too. You can enter in their match amount as an offline donation, which we'll get to in a bit. Um, and once the system notifies you with, that the match has been met, you know, you can log that. And then once the Allegheny Foundation approves the offline donation, it'll be reflected on your leaderboard totals. Uh, just one thing to keep in mind, once the match is closed, it can't be edited. Um, so just, you know, pay attention while you're, you know, queuing these matches. Um, and then as you're promoting your match, you also want to add some information to your story, especially if it's a big match, you're going to want to promote the match on your social media channels, send out an email and so on, however you communicate, uh, just to let all your followers and your supporters know that there's a live match. Um, the countdown itself is going to add urgency, so counting down your match, you know we have an hour left of our match. Sharing your progress is a really great way to get people excited and just urge them to kind of take a moment, stop what they're doing and make a donation. Um, okay, so we have a ton of kind of donation management reports available to you on the Mighty Cause platform. Uh, I'm going to kind of run through a couple of them pretty quickly. So with Mighty Cause donation report, you're able to view the information associated with each of your donations made to your organization through the platform. So at the top of the report, you can filter and you can search for a particular donation or a set of donation. Uh, the display, so it's always going to default to the last 30 days of donations. So if you are going in and you want to look at previous donations outside of the 30 day window, you're just going to need to adjust the time period filter. Um, you are able to filter by the campaign type, you can filter by the event, 
uh, donation type. There's a ton of just different ways that you can access your donation information um, and the view that it gives you. Um, recurring donations, this is going to be a really great tool for you all this year, especially, you know, if you participated last year, you're going to have this information available to you, but organizations, you'll have the ability to manage, um, sorry, did I say recurring? I meant retention, <laughs> your retention report. Um, so this is going to be your list of all your donors who have been retained and not retained. So if you have participated in last year's event, you'll be able to go in, click the retention report, um, and access the list of those who have not given to you during this current Give Local Allegheny Highlands event. Um, you'll be able to filter through the status, um, and then you can also email them directly through the platform, or you can download the entire report and send them uh, a contact email through, you know, whatever email provider that you use. Um, and then we'll get into recurring donations. So you also have the ability to manage recurring monthly donations within your recurring donations section. So you can keep track of any recurring donations. Uh, disbursements is another report in this section. Uh, you can see all the disbursements sent to your organization, the status of each disbursement, the method of disbursement, um, and you can click on, oh, I see. Yeah, you can talk to me, I'll go for it. Oh, um, well, I just wanted to uh, add on to uh, talking about these donation reports. One of the questions that we got a lot at the conclusion of last year's event was um, nonprofits asking how to access the um, like mailing address uh, for people who had made a donation so they could send them a handwritten uh, thank you letter for the donation. Mm -hmm. And so that information is also available in this uh, donation report section. So if you click on donations and then download the um, Excel file that has the information, you can see the billing address for each donor to your cause and then use that information to send them like a, a physical thank you letter as well. I just wanted to add that in. Yeah, no, that's great. That's, yep, you'll, that's where you'll find all that information. Um, so there's much more information that shows on the actual computer view. So it does help to just download and, and kind of assess from there. Um, okay, so I'm going to get a little deeper into adding the offline donations since uh, offline donations do count towards your main leaderboards. Um, so let's see. Um, okay, so basically offline donations are added to show your fundraising success, you know, outside of Mighty Cause. So any gifts made via ca cash or check during the entire giving period, May 24th to June 7th, they're going to count towards your organization's giving day total, provided that you do enter those gifts into your organization profile by the 7th. So to add an offline donation, you'll just select add offline donation in the upper right hand corner of the page or select the plus icon. So this kind of shows that you'll go to your dashboard. There's a report section donations, there's offline donations, and there's a little add offline donation button. Um, and then in this section, you'll have a ton of different information. Uh, you can label the source, uh, the date, you can hide the name from the display. Um, there's just a lot of tools in here, so it's pretty straightforward, but I did want to kind of call out just what it looks like and how to add. Um, okay, so we're going to move into activating your ambassadors. So moving on, uh, ambassadors, these are the people who are in your organization's inner circle who are going to really boost your campaign. So these are your board members, your volunteers, anyone who's super engaged, staff member, and so on. Uh, utilizing your ambassadors can help you break out of your list of existing supporters and engage new people, people that you would not otherwise have access to. Um, an ambassador can help you by simply sharing a link to your page with our social circle to ask them to donate and help boost your campaign. Or if you have a board member, for instance, who is super well connected, this can be a really huge boost for you. Um, they can also help by getting involved in peer to peer fundraising, uh, which we are going to go into now. Um, so peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, if you're brand new to it, it's a fundraising technique where you're going to basically kind of deputize your supporters to fundraise on your behalf. So the Mighty Cause platform is super, um, really greatly set up for this. Uh, it's super easy for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, it's just a really great way to kind of shake up your campaign and work on acquiring new donors. As we were talking about earlier, if one of your goals is to get a certain number of new donors, this is a great way to do that. Um, so if you want to try peer to peer fundraising, you would basically ask an ambassador, a supporter to set up a fundraising page for your organization on Mighty Cause for Give Local Allegheny Highlands. It sounds like a big ask, but it's often really fun for them to engage their 
you know, your biggest supporters and allow them to tell their own story about your organization, like how they came to work with you, why your work is important to them. Um, and these pages are not distracting or drawing attention away from your campaign because they are all operating alongside your campaign. So it's like casting multiple, you know, fishing lines out. You're reaching more people that you would not typically have access to for donations. Um, so, uh, so people like your board volunteer staff, this is a good way for them to get involved, <clears throat> excuse me, without being asked to give money. So this is another, you know, meaningful way for someone to contribute to your campaign in a non-monetary way. Um, and also it's a really great part of your stewarding process, really building and sustaining relationships with different supporters. So maybe you don't want to do a big ask, you know, to everybody on your email list to create a peer to peer fundraising page. But this is a really great way to kind of like connect deeper with your supporters and say, hey, we're having a campaign, we would love for you to consider doing peer to peer fundraising, you know, um, here's how you can do this. Um, so to help make things even easier for you, you can take it a step further by creating a fundraising template within your account. So you can pre-fill images, you can pre-fill talking points, facts, uh, logos, and you can create your template under fundraising tools, fundraising templates. So it's very easy to get to. Um, and I am showing you these buttons here because this is where people will go on your page to create a peer to peer fundraising campaign. Um, so we have, you know, donate and then we have fundraise, they'll click this, and they'll be prompted to create a peer to peer page um, that you essentially hopefully have, you know, filled out the template for. Um, and then you can also hide this button. So if you're like, we don't want anyone looking at peer to peer fundraising this year, or say on the day of the event, all you want highlighted on your page is the donate button, you can go to your page, click the little, um, what is this megaphone button, uh, and you can toggle it off and you can hide this fundraise button. So just a little you know, trick for you to kind of keep your page a little bit cleaner on the day of the event, if that's important to you. Um, team fundraising, uh, another peer-to-peer -peer option. Uh, we have team fundraising and events. So teams and events are really great peer-to-peer -peer options for people who want to fundraise together as a group, like your board or say a company, or uh, if you have a volunteer group who would like to kind of do like a team activity, Teams and events are good ways to get people working together, united for your cause, inspiring friendly competition. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got my tea, but it's a lot of talking, y'all. <laughs> um, so basically, the difference between teams and events is that an event will allow individual fundraising pages and groups, uh, teams of people to participate and fundraise together, while a team fundraiser is a really great option for just a group of individuals working towards a collective goal. So the cool thing about using our teams or events uh, products for your giving day is that there are tools built into them to make managing it easy. So you can create, just as I was saying, peer to peer templates, you can create fundraiser templates for teams um, so that they can kind of quickly go in, pre fill some, some areas of their page. Uh, just a really great way. So if you're thinking of, you know, we're, we're going to keep going back to kind of the goals for your campaign, and if one of them is to kind of extend your reach, get new donors, try your hand at peer-to-peer -peer fundraising for the first time. These are some really great options for you. Um, we are going to get into email strategy now as another uh, really important tool for you on your Give Local Allegheny Highlands event. Um, emails, as we all know, are a direct line to supporters. So unless they've unsubscribed from you, your messages will end up right in their inbox and probably you know ping on their phone. So in general, you're gonna wanna keep your email super short, simple, skimmable, uh, and direct for your call to action. Most people, you know, are reading their emails on their phones these days. So you want them to be able to kind of scroll, get the point and know what to do with it. Um, on that note, people are much more likely to read emails that pertain directly to them. So uh, when you're kind of getting into your email strategy, we always recommend segmenting your email list, which means basically sorting your donors into a few key groups. So breaking them down. So uh, examples would be people who give to your organization on a regular basis, maybe your monthly donors, maybe your one time donors, maybe people who have, you know, utilized your services but never donated, or, you know, your board members could be a segment, your volunteers could be a segment. So you don't need to craft entirely new emails for each of these groups. But you're going to want to tweak kind of small things about each email for each group so that you're making it personal. So, for instance, if you're sending an email to your volunteers, 
uh, you're going to want to acknowledge how they already help your organization. You wouldn't want to just send them an email that is also going out to a major gift donor, uh, you know, like asking for a donation without already recognizing that they give or that they support your organization as a volunteer already. So you're not going to want to you're going to want to kind of cater each ask to each group of people. So that's the first thing for strategy. Um, and then, of course, paying attention to the timing of your emails. Uh, we definitely recommend taking the time to pre-schedule as much as you can beforehand. Um, having template emails ready to go for the day of the event is a very key part of email strategy. Um, you know, if do you want to send an e-blast in the morning of the event, asking people to help you get to, you know, whatever campaign goal you have, uh, have one for the noon, have one for the evening. You know, you don't want to be sitting at your computer on the day of this event trying to draft all these emails. So try to pre-schedule as much as you can, know what goals you want to get out of your email strategy um, and kind of the timing for all of that. Oh, and of course, test your emails. I always tell people sometimes they, you know, draft them up and then they forget to send them to themselves first. So always send yourself the email draft first, test it, make sure the buttons are working, make sure your donate button is correctly linked. Um, if you have an iPhone, test it on an iPhone. If you have a friend who has an Android, you can always uh, test it and send to them as well. Um, we're going to get into social media strategy. I'm going to take a sip of my tea. So Daniel, if you want to talk about the different marketing materials you've put together for the organizations. Uh, yeah, so this uh, just went live on the website yesterday. Uh, I think hopefully everyone here receives uh, an email I sent out kind of talking about what I added. Um, and it's under uh, the uh, header right now called promotion tools if you're on the homepage of givelocalah.org. And so uh, what I've done is I've created, I think right now there's seven uploaded um, posters kind of promoting the giving day as a whole. Um, and uh, so we provided a link to download each of these posters, but we've also added in um, a link that you can go directly to a template on uh, the website Canva, which is a really easy to use uh, kind of poster designing website that is also free. And so if you want to um, you know, take one of these posters that uh, has been created and add in your organization's logo or put your organization's um, like a page link instead of the overall givelocalah.org page or things like that, you can just click on the, the um, page, the line that says access the Canva link. And then you should be able to go in and kind of really quickly mess around and change these to be more relevant for your organization in particular. But like I said, they're also designed so that hopefully every organization can include these in social media posts and um, emails as they are right now. So we've got some talking about the event as a whole, and then we've got the one that's displayed here talking about the power hours for both the small and large nonprofits. But there's also one with just the small nonprofit power hours listed, and there's one with just the large nonprofit power hours listed. And then there's one explaining what golden tickets are. And so hopefully these are a really helpful tool for you all in uh, promoting the event. Um, whether you want to print the posters out and uh, distribute them to uh, businesses or um, potential donors, or whether you want to email them to people or post them on social media. And if you have any questions on using the templates, making the most out of them, please, uh, you know, give me a call at the foundation office number, email me, and I'll be happy to help you. And um, if you're posting them on social media, particularly on Instagram or Twitter, we are going to have a live social media page um, on the homepage of the event this year on June 7th, so that every post on Instagram and Twitter using the hashtag uh, GiveLocalAH will automatically populate on the social media feed. So um, when people come to the site, one of the first things that they'll see is your social media post on the homepage of the website. So make sure to use those hashtags. And um, like I said, if you have any questions on how to best use these posters, or if you have any other content that you'd like for me to make into a poster for your organization, just reach out to me and I'm happy to help you with that. Yeah, that's awesome. These are great uh, posters. Um, so for strategy for social media, we always recommend everyone staying in their comfort zone, you know, going where your audience is when it comes to your social media strategy. If most of your followers are on Facebook and not Instagram. Spend your time and efforts on Facebook uh, to promote your campaign rather than Instagram. Really put your efforts on the platform where you're most likely to reach the people and have a big impact. Um, and again, a lot of this strategy is always coming back to pre-scheduling. So we really recommend kind of pre-scheduling Instagram posts, um, 
you know, saving your tweets, um, kind of doing as much as you can before the event uh, so that you don't have the headache of trying to scramble and grab content. Um, uh, Facebook's publishing tools, the Creator Studio, TweetDeck, you can, there's a lot of different ways that you can pre-schedule things, even just on a Google Doc, you know, scheduling and pulling images and kind of getting things ready. That way you can save all your live posting um, for things that are time sensitive on the day of. So if you're on Instagram and you need to do, you know, a live stream because there's, you know, 15 minutes left on the power hour and you're so close, uh, you know, things like that are better use of your time. Um, and then, of course, also creating templates, uh, just as Daniel was saying, you can go into Canva and you can create templates for yourself for the day of the event. Um, it's a good idea to have a template that thanks donors where you have, you know, a big thank you and then you can go in and all the edits you have to make is the name of the donor. Things like that really kind of boost your campaign, make people feel seen, uh, and it's a quick and easy thing that you can do on the day of. Speaking of quick and easy things to kind of like have support with, this is a great task to give someone that you trust on your organization, board members, a trusted volunteer, a trusted employee, someone who can go in and they can kind of do all of these social media posts, someone who can go in and just uh, add additional comments to Facebook posts or, you know, ask answer questions on Instagram from people. Um, social media, as we all know, can be a very big time crunch, time crush, I should say. <laughs> um, so having someone to be there to offer you support can go a really long way. Um, we also recommend budgeting a little bit of money if you're able to, to boost some of your social posts or your tweets. You know, 10 or $15 for a little bit of advertisement can actually go a really long way during a 24 hour campaign. Um, you'll want to make sure your ad is targeted properly. So spend a little time figuring out how to target your advertisement. You can always default to targeting the people who already like your page or already follow you. That's always a great option. Um, and of course, in terms of the type of content that does well on social media, uh, I mean, it depends a little bit on the platform, but we're seeing that, you know, videos, um, really engaging photos, multi-swipe photos, those are going to be doing really well. Um, and also kind of thinking outside of the box. Maybe you have never live streamed on Instagram and you want to try it out just briefly, like I was saying, to get a little bit of momentum during big moments, power hours especially, um, to really just generate some buzz uh, while delivering that ever so algorithm-friendly content. Um, and just also make sure you're checking out the toolkit on the Give a Local Age site under step five. There's a bunch of different promotional marketing tools. We have tips, we have different support articles, different blog posts that Mighty Cause has put together to kind of help you kind of get in the mind frame of what's going to do well for your social media uh, strategy. Um, so for giving a follow up, you're definitely going to want to kind of build this into your campaign strategy. Follow up is super important. Uh, you're going to want to plan how you're thanking your donors, things like making a video, uh, sharing a photo of your staff. These are all things that you can create before the event happens, um, just so that you can send out and you can do timely thank yous. Be sure to talk about the impact of the funds you raised. What were you trying to do with the funds? If there's anything specific, like if you're trying to get, you know, new lighting in your facility, uh, just really closing the loop on your campaign. Um, so that means like, yeah, just like really being good, following up quickly, um, and also just letting them know how to stay engaged with your organization. If, if, if that's something that, you know, is obviously important to everybody is not just, you know, reaching these donors in a 24 hour period, but like really trying to engage and keep them engaged in what you're doing. Um, and then you'll want to make sure you've got an onboarding plan in place. So as we're talking about new donors, um, as these people are coming in, you know, like Daniel was saying, download the donation report, collect their email addresses, collect their, um, I'm sorry, their mailing addresses. So you can send them like a welcome packet would be a really cool thing. Uh, photos of your staff, you know, like things like that, just sending them something that makes them feel a bit more connected to what they're supporting um, so that they continue to come back and want to offer their support. Um, and then speaking of support, we are here for you. Uh, the Give Local Allegheny team is here for you. Um, on the day of the event, we'll be here. So I have the hours, uh, the phone number for you. 
uh, the email address. Even now, if you have questions, you can email our Mighty Cause support team if you need help setting up EFT, if you need help figuring out like the details of your match. Our team is very fluent in matches and all matches questions. So uh, reach out to them for, for sure. Um, but that was, that's pretty much it. I know we've kind of flew through it and there was a ton of content. So I'm hoping that what you were able to kind of see Maybe something piqued your interest. Maybe you said, oh, I didn't know that you could, you know, create a team's fundraising uh, kind of side of things. Maybe we want to try that. So just kind of kind of finding something and kind of sticking to your campaign goals and figuring out kind of where uh, the strategy can be kind of woven in so you can have a really strong uh, Give Local Allegheny Highlands. Uh, yeah. So if you have any questions, you can send those through. And Daniel, if there's anything that you want to share, you can do so as well. I don't uh, have anything myself right now, but uh, yeah, like Sarah said, if anyone has questions, we'd be happy to uh, spend some time to answer them right now. No questions. Everyone's thinking it through. <laughs> Well, I'm going to download the presentation and I'll download the slides as well. So you can kind of download the entire slide deck, um, look through everything, take some time, really take some time looking through your dashboard. Like how I was showing how you can find your retention port. I think your retention report, if you're, if this is your, you know, second year on Give Local, um, that's going to be a really key item for you. Um, seeing who has been retained and who hasn't like people who donated during the event last year you're going to definitely probably want to reach out to them this year so just kind of keeping an eye on that will be really helpful um, but other than that i'll wait just a couple more seconds and see and then uh reach out to us let us know if you have any questions okay awesome thanks everyone have a good rest of your day.